Hi everyone, Deb here with Dahlia Designs, Jewelry and More. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. So this will be up on the 11th of September and it will be 13 finished pieces of jewelry all made with the September Potomac Beads Treasure Box and the kit or the box was called Happy Camper and I have some left but not a whole lot and I'll show you at the very end just briefly what I have left so the first thing okay so what I did this time is I actually used two bead boards and I laid out this necklace another necklace four pairs of earrings because I always pull out enough to do earrings for each piece um, before I actually make like necklaces and bracelets because um, I, I want to have enough to have matching earrings or sometimes and you'll see this with the lamp work I only had two that matched so those two became the earrings and the rest went into a piece you'll show I'll show later um, so I have a variety because we had a variety in this kit this is a very simple strung le necklace but of course I had to use this sort of blue green metallic cat only I used it with these um, sort of opal and bronze rounds I think they were called check beads and the um, mirror faceted kind of disco balls in more like a gunmetal color um, two of the bead frames out of the five we got and uh, these actually were from I think a February kit they were jet AB round um, and then I just added my own lobster claw clasp, beading wire, wire guardians, crimp tubes in silver, and an extender chain with just a little drop at the end. I wanted it to be simple. Uh, I think this one is 16 inch extendable to 18, but don't hold me to that. I have everything written down. I just can't remember and I don't have my tablet here handy. And I write everything down because all these pieces that were from my stash I have to take out of my business inventory plus it helps me price things if I want to sell those pieces and then the matching earrings are these I am pretty sure these are silver finished steel ear wires I did use the little earring backs that came I think in um, June if I'm not mistaken don't hold me to that either June or July um, oh and what I did with these I struggled a little bit with these I, I was doing the earrings first to see I did put those little round black beads on top and bottom but I could only fit one in with this so these are actually the little white um, sort of pearl 11 seed beads that I think were in the August kit and I just have one on top and one on bottom I don't know if you can see those or not but they're in the bead frame and they help hold this in place without showing the wire and same on the beading wire I did the same exact treatment there and I just love it and it's a cute little necklace because I'm a cat lady I have a kitty cat not that particular type my daughter has two kitty cats so we love dogs too it's just harder to uh, have them where I'm at neighbors all around me have dogs so yeah so let me sit this over here and I'll bring out the next set Give me one moment since i was talking about the lamp work beads um i still have two left they didn't seem to match anything else these were the only two that matched each other and i used two of those little round black beads uh, the two opal bronze beads and then the matching um, lamp work and again i'd use those earring backs on here and then mostly what i had left except for two were some form shape of black and white so I sort of a mismatched lamp work but color is the same and again I just used the little black seed beads and the opals now these black melon beads are vintage German glass and they're from my stash I might have finished them I'm not positive um, yeah I'm not sure so that is what this one looks like and I um, just put on a heavy kind of it's actually not a heavy chain but it needed a substantial chain I guess is the right word 
to go with these because these are substantial and I don't think I double crimped on these but I did use wire guardians one sec uh, these are actually something called quick links I had in my stash for years now and I used a more substantial lobster claw so this actually opens um, on the front side and I believe it is also an 18 inch necklace so that's that one I thought that was kind of cool and I'll put these here because they go with now well, they can go with this or they can just be worn alone or even this can sort of go with with this okay I'm gonna be right back with the next one I think this one might be my favorite these are the check smooth rounds in dark topaz and then we have the bicones in the um, light topaz this one is a little heavy mostly because of these beads we got three of these sort of slices I got two in like a topaz color and one is more of a smoky color which I didn't use but I have laid out on my bead board playing with it I did double crimp this necklace here and here because of the weight I just want to make sure it held up and I did use wire guardians and I have an extender on so I think this is 18 extendable to no this one might be 16 extendable to 18 I can't remember I don't know if you remember these these were from a few months back and I hadn't used them well, I used them here and the the eight millimeter smooth rounds fit perfectly in here but I did put on top of that a bunch of these little black um, actually I pulled out it's I didn't use those I pulled out my Yuki 80 black seed beads from a few months ago that we got and they're on the beading wire in here and then I just kept going with the beading wire and crimped up here so it looks like it's maybe two pieces but it's not and then I just alternated um, with the topaz bicones in between um, I also brought in the little tiny bead caps in silver that were from a few months ago just on the dark topaz check glass smooth rounds that's the only place I used them and then these are what they were calling the tiger beads which are brown and black together faceted rounds in check glass and I love this and I, I tried to put the ones that had more of the like tiger eye looking to them a lot of the brownish color in them this one's a little darker but these um, there's five down here and these two in the front have the most variation in color of those I love those and then the darker ones are more up this way and then I ran out of those um, except for the pair I have on the earrings and just used the rounds and the um, Bicones, topaz bicones in the back and of course an extender just with a round and the bicone as well and I think I had two of these larger lobster class so I used one on here and one on this one because of the weight and then of course the earrings to go with it these are those tiger style check faceted glass the bicone and then just dangling from that with the little um, bead caps you know and usually when I think of fall I tend to think in in um, uh, gold colors with with topaz and things but I prefer usually silver and I really like the silver with it let me know your thoughts do you prefer gold or bronze with the sort of autumn colors or do you like silver no matter what let me know I'd appreciate that all right I'll be back with uh, I think I have Mm, a couple more <laughs> all right so to finish this up the next piece I did was actually what I had done is when I was laying out all these I also laid this out and this out except I changed it and these out and I wanted to make sure I had nice ones because some of these are a little um, and even that one is a little thinner on the back uh, anyway I tried to pick out good matching ones and then the little yellow beads the sodalite the check tiles and yeah again those little yellow check rounds 
So I think that looks really cool. I love those. And uh, they actually go with these necklaces, which I'll explain in a minute. But this one, I really wanted to do to use this. And since it's top drilled, I didn't feel like wire wrapping it. So I just did a memory wire necklace. I seem to be into those lately. And I used uh, a simple pattern of, okay, these are from a different box, like from April or something. But look at that green on those. Doesn't that almost exactly match? This sort of had like an iridescent green look to it. And that, I thought those, that green, which is called Peridot in four millimeter rounds, check glass, uh, or no, I'm sorry, crystal, atomic crystal. But I thought it matched so well with this. So I used a, just a simple pattern of those crystals, the sodalite beads, all the way up to here, because since I had laid out these necklaces as well, um, I was running out of the sodalite. In fact, there is one piece somewhere on my floor near my beading table. Um, and if I find it, I think I have one or two more of these peridot beads and I'll put a little bead dangle on one of the ends. Now, um, I, <laughs> I ended up playing around because all I had laid out was up to here. And I thought, well, that's not long enough. What am I going to do? And at first I did a pattern of like uh, these little yellow two millimeter crystals. They were from a few months back too. And these are those yellow swirl six millimeter crystals from a few months back. So at first I had done yellow crystal, yellow crystal, yellow crystal. And then I had little blue um, bicones, I think they were. And then I did like three bicones to bring in more blue. I didn't like it. So I went digging in my stash and these are called uh, Olivine Picasso Finish Edo Seed Beads. I can't remember who they're Matubo. I think they're Matubo. I'm not positive. They're in a tube for sure. Anyway, I couldn't find a blue that I liked. I had navy, but it was shiny and I didn't want shiny necessarily. So I thought these kind of looked more natural, had a more natural look to them. And they went with the Peridot um, crystals in here. So I did the, the, the green. I was running low on these green Peridot crystals too. So I did the yellow the yellow swirl, the yellow, I think they're topaz or something, pale yellow, I don't know. 10 of these repeat the same pattern a few times. And then at the very end, I put one more of the Peridot. I think I have two of those left and that's it from whatever month it was. I have a few more of these pale yellow swirl beads left still. And a few more, I think of these little yellow beads and I scrapped using the dark blue, sort of a royal blue um, bicone that we had from a previous month, but I think that's gorgeous. It fits me if it if I open it up. I have like a 17 inch neck snug, so I would say that's about what this is, is 17 inch. And I thought about putting a clasp on it, but then if people have smaller necks, it, it won't fit them. So I decided to leave it as it is. And I might just, like I said, put a charm on here if I can find the other set of light. I really could have gone into my stash and pulled out. I thought about that too, to, to bring out more, um, maybe larger soda light to go with these or a different shape. But I decided to try and use as much as I could just the box boxes, this September box plus stuff from older boxes. All right, so I had laid these out and I finished up these coins. So there's uh, five on there, one on here, that's six, seven, eight. And I think that's what we got, eight, because I don't have any left. <laughs> um, so I did this one first before the bracelet and I strung it on like a turquoise beading wire because these sort of have a turquoise blue in them. You can't really see it, but you can sort of see it through the yellow. So that helps bring in some of that turquoise and also it sort of turns it greenish <laughs> some. So that kind of then goes with the, the squares and the green on these um, check glass beads. And I did use um, sodalite. So around the yellows, I have the sodalite. 
around the squares and the check coins, I have the little yellow rounds. And then we switch to the sodalite. So if I center this, I, I fiddled around with the pattern a little bit on this too, but I went from the center. So I have one here going out. We have the squares, the rounds, the coin, the squares, the round, the coin, the squares, the rounds. That's how I did it. Now these, um, I found, I had a pack from a particular uh, source that had bales and some antique brass toggle clasps too, to be precise, and a silver one that looked just like that. And I thought that looked very um, sort of natural or kind of rugged, which I thought went kind of with the Picasso look on these, some of these. These look like surfer crosses to me. Could have gone a whole different way with those and like a beach theme or something, but I decided not to. Um, it was a camping thing, right? So anyway, I just um, crimped with a antique brass crimp bead, which I don't like that much, but I have them, so I'm using them. Uh, right onto the loop on the toggles, and then I used an oval antique brass jump ring to attach this chain from my stash also. All this back part is from my stash, including the extender chain and the um, lobster claw. Now I did double this because it's, it's kind of a fine chain. Um, so I doubled it on the necklace. It's just about two inches of chain here and here on each side. And that I'm pretty sure brought it to 18 inches, extendable to 20. And I love how that turned out. And then I had these beads laid out to, along with this to finish them up. I still have more of these, but I finished the sodalite. I finished the coin. Uh, of course, these were from a different month. And I think I have a few left of these uh, pale yellow rounds, but one of them, uh, literally a few, one of them was uh, amazed me that the it's not drilled properly or something. I couldn't get anything through it. So, but that's just one one bead of many. Um, this was from my stash. It's antique brass finished pewter that I got years ago. And oops, I need to fix that jump ring. They're 18 gauge. I can't do it with my fingers. Um, so once I fix that, it's on there for good. I ended up, this is a, a necklace extender like this one here. And I ended up first, I had the whole thing on there. It was too long. This is about a seven inch bracelet now with the whole extender on there, you know, it was like gigundous. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that's the bracelet. Oh, I forgot to show you some things, hang on. So anyway, um, yeah, that is what it looks like. This is goes in the front, preferably, and um, yeah, cute. So I didn't have any more of these toggles or I would have used that except in silver, but I found this other cute little antique brass one, which has, sort of a fleur-de-lis shape on it uh, and some swirls. It's a littler one, which I like for bracelets better anyway. So I actually made a bracelet uh, that doesn't really go with any of this stuff, but I'll bring it out. <laughs> I forgot because I put it in a different spot than the other ones. Let's see if I can put this in here and move it over. So, and two pair of earrings, which I don't have on cards and I made them specifically to go with this bracelet. Let me take it off of here or hold it up. These are the red pinch beads and the red bicones we got. These are the dark topaz. And again, I had um, more of those black bumpy beads left. And I'm pretty sure I finished them between that necklace and these because I had used them for something else before. This one I put on a gunmetal or hematite color clasp and I used that same color of um, jump rings. This is a closed one and this is an open one. So this is a little bigger and I used a sort of a silver color beading wire and I think I used the, um, I, I'm, I think I used crimp beads on those or I just used smaller crimp tubes. Anyway, I just did a pattern, you know, I, 
I have um, the black in the back here, and then I have three of the dark topaz. They weren't the last ones, but they were the last I wanted to use on these projects. And then the pinch beads have red and black in them. That's why I brought the black in. I just felt like I needed to break up all the red a little bit. And the topaz breaks it up a little bit. That's sort of, sort of a reddish tone too. So I went with the black and then the sort of gunmetal hematite look. And to go with that, I made this pair of earrings from the items in the kit, except for the ear wires. So we have the dark topaz, the pinch bead in red and black, and the red bicones. Just a really cute, simple dangle. And then I made some with the um, bumpy beads that, that were from my stash. And then these were those silver clear and gray ones from the August kit, and then the red bicones again. I just did wire wraps. Uh, I like doing wire wraps better. And I also, on all the earrings, I used those um, silicone backings that were in, I think, the June, June or July kit. I forget. So there are my makes. Should be 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes, 13 pieces. And I told you I'd bring in the kit. Uh, what's left? I did not use just couldn't feel it. I was playing around a little bit, but I'm out of time, of course. So here's what I have left from the September kit. You see, oh, I, I have, I have several more of those yellow rounds. I have some of the topaz um, bicones and the red bicones, but I use quite a lot. These are the two lamp works I have left. See, they didn't really go with anything else. I'll save them for like a focal dangle or something at some point. And I have one of these left. I was thinking of doing a ring, but I, I decided not to. And I have an idea for this to use with this as well, and maybe to use with this. Um, this is, oops, this is the one that's more uh, it's darker. I don't know if you can see. It's more of a smoky quartz, and these are more topaz color. See, so I used the two topaz ones on a necklace. I think I'm going to do another necklace, uh, but maybe just a chain or a braided cord. This I'm thinking, well, let me finish this thought first. So I laid out these. There's three of the tiger beads check glass and two of the dark topaz smooth rounds and then a couple of the literally a couple of the white with um, opal with bronze color rounds and some of the topaz bicones and yellow rounds anyway i'm thinking of just making some kind of um you know bead dangle cluster i don't know if it'll be just to go on a chain necklace or what. And then I didn't use these flowers, but these definitely go with the color of the flowers that I got. And I saved out three of these opal with bronze to put under here because the hole, well, I'm gonna lie now. I thought the hole on these, no, I lied. I have a couple here I can switch with if I need to. Um, I wanted the bronzy part to be facing down out of the flower and the hole in there and then I thought maybe I'd put a little seed bead and somehow wire wrap that. But again, I'm going to make that into some kind of dangle. I think with these um, tile beads and maybe this button, which I just was playing around with, but I didn't use either button and I love both of them. This one though. Uh, I'm going to have to treat it, I think. It's just like, um, I forget what they said this is made out of. It looks, oops, it looks like wood. Um, but I think I'm going to do something to the back of that. But um, I don't know when I'm going to do that because I'm out of time this month. <laughs> and it's already just, uh, well, maybe in a few weeks I can get to, to more things before the next kit comes. So this is what I have left. 
out of the September kit. I'm going to be taking all these items and putting them in my September box to go down and be priced. Downstairs is what I mean by down. And the rest of this I'll, I'll um, put in with the appropriate storage box that I have. I did a video on how I'm storing um, kit pieces that I haven't used. But for now I'm going to leave this out on my desk for a little bit because I still am thinking about playing with those things yet. I love fall colors and those feel like fall colors to me. So let me know if you liked my pieces and um, which one or ones are your favorites. Um, it's hard for me to pick favorites but I'm, I'm drawn to the um, autumn colors here. And of course, I love blue and the yellows and greens together too. But I think this necklace here is my, or this set really is my favorite this time. I don't know. I love the little cat too. And I also love the memory wire. I love this, oops, can't even see it. This trapezoid pendant on this memory wire necklace that I made. Love that trapezoid. And... I don't really normally care for lamp work, but I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a little biased. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please do comment down below. If you liked anything at all, please give me a thumbs up. Also, I apologize if you've been hearing the window air conditioner. I've had to have it on up here. I have whole house air, but there's only one vent up here, and it doesn't really cool it off in the upstairs very well. I have like a room and a half upstairs, a small house. <laughs> and um, so that's my studio, which is an absolute disaster right now. Again, I keep trying to get to it and then I mess it up more and then I don't get to it again. Anyway, I digress. So let me know if you liked anything and I will talk to you again very soon. Hugs, love and peace.